to you. That's the, that's the ironic thing. When you become financially free, all of a sudden people are calling you to build vacation rentals and to start the brokerage and let's start a syndication company. You can't do that when you're in a daily grind. You can't concentrate on that stuff because you're concentrating, ironically, on money. But when you become financially free, you don't concentrate on money anymore. You're concentrating on opportunities. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Are you ready to start investing in real estate today, but don't know where to start? Sometimes investing can seem way too complicated, but it actually couldn't be any easier than with homeinvest.com. You know the co-founder and my friend, Nate Armstrong. He appeared on episode 20, and if you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it, episode number 20. Home Invest is a company that allows you to invest in turnkey real estate. Their goal is to build powerful investment tools that make real estate investing accessible to everyone. They have contractors and property managers available for you with the click of your mouse. While other real estate agents can only offer a property, Home Invest brings you a full turnkey package that allows you to diversify your investments, earn passive income, and start building equity in properties. Their simple, intuitive design allows newcomers and experienced investors alike to hit the ground running and to be able to choose the properties when they want and where they want. View easy to understand charts and data to allow you to buy in only a few clicks or just a simple phone call. With Home Invest, you'll be building your portfolio as quickly or as slowly as you would like. And right now, Home Invest is giving our listeners, Pillar of Wealth Creation listeners, a free course on how to finally win in real estate investing. So go to homeinvest.com forward slash pillars. That's homeinvest.com forward slash pillars to claim your free course today. All right, today I've got uh, Gino Barbaro with me. Uh, Gino, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Todd. How's it going? I am fantastic. And uh, Gino, most of uh, my listeners probably recognize you from the Wheelbarrow Profits. Uh, you and your partner Jake are on that. Um, and then uh, as far as you go, you used to be a uh, restaurant owner. Maybe you still own that. Do you still own that restaurant? Uh, my brother does. Never sold out. I've got a little piece of it, so he's, okay. he's going through the pain, my friend. The daily grind. <laughs> <laughs> but you've since moved on. Now you're doing the multifamily. Uh, you guys have bought uh, quite a few units, so you could talk about uh, that as well. And, uh, you're doing the podcast, and I know you guys are doing a lot of the education stuff, which is great. I see it all over the place. Um, you've got some conferences going on. Uh, I see, or I heard that you're doing a, a brokerage now. You've got a brokerage started. Um, and so I'll just, I'll just stop and let you explain because you've got way too much going on for me to even uh, try to get into it. So I'll let you uh, do the storytelling. So why don't you tell our listeners uh, a little bit about what you guys got going on and then we'll kind of rewind and talk about your background. Sure. I mean, uh, we bought our first property in February of 2013. So everyone on here, uh, the pizza guy and the drug rep bought our first property five years ago and no syndication. We're up to a thousand units in five years. That's I, I'm sure a lot of it has to do with market uh, appreciation and being able to refinance and roll. But I, I think it's more about taking action. You know, idea plus imp implementation. I told my community director today equals equals success because you have all the ideas in the world. I could be the smartest guy in the world, but if I don't implement them, it's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to create that massive success. So what Jake and I have been really thinking about is those multiple streams of income. Um, and what you what you've been referencing is we started out with a 25 unit property. After that, we within a year we were up to 200 units. I don't know how it happened. I really don't know. I was really motivated. I knew my why was I, at the daily grind. I'd reference to. I just hated my my job. And when you get to be year thirty six, I was around that age when I started really dreading it. I wish I had done it sooner. 
um, I wasn't uncomfortable enough. Um, at the 200 unit mark, we decided to launch an education company. And it wasn't an education company, it was a podcast. And it was me and Jake writing a book. I don't even know how that happened, right? We just <laughs> sat down, you know, and you, you go through the learn, do, and teach, right? You're learning something, all of a sudden you're doing it, and you've got 200 units. And always think to yourself, wherever you are in life, there's always people behind you that you can help. And that's from where I came from. So part of me becoming financially free from the restaurant, and while I was working there full time, I did sitting down, writing articles, scheduling podcasts, talking to brokers. I really love that aspect. And, you know, my mom would always come to me and go, why are you working so hard? And I would always tell her, this is not work. You know, the restaurants work. This is like really a lot of fun, right? So from the education, we started meeting these amazing guys. I started learning more about the business and I started growing a little community. And from that, we started scaling up, buying more properties. And from there, we sprung the, we had the property management company, we had the education company. Um, and in the last six months, we're deciding that we're gonna start opening a brokerage company and a syndication. We haven't syndicated yet. So um, I was fortunate enough to have some amazing syndicators on my on my show, whether it's Ken McElroy, Bruce Peterson, Devin Elder, um, you know, the list goes on and on. I learned from them, you know what I mean? Brian Burke, all the guys on Bigger Pockets. I learned how to syndicate from them. Um, and everyone's model is a little bit different, but I said, you know what, we want to hit a thousand units before we start syndicating. That was our, you know, was our goal was, and that's what we've done. And we've been able to do that just by growing and by adding team members and by just having the, you know, it's the pie is, is not finite. You know, when you think you're an investor, when you're looking at that one investment, all you think is the cash flow from that one investment. But if you can start thinking about expanding your multiple streams, whether you're a residential broker who's fixing and flipping, get your broker's license, get a contractor's license, open up a plumbing company, whatever it may do to actually feed that one investment, become a private lender, start getting a mortgage, whatever it is that can feed that initial investment, the sky's the limit because then you have these multiple streams of income. Start the education company, whatever it may be. Um, and that's what happened with Jake and I. We got fortunate that we actually saw it and then we started implementing these companies and we started you know, networking with other people and just growing them. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it sounds like you guys were hungry. You wanted to get out of your grind and, uh, you know, do something different. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what it was all about for me. Um, I, I was fortunate that, you know, I had a pretty good base. I have a great family. I've got six kids. I have a very supportive wife. And I think she saw that I was going through that daily grind. I was working on Christmas Eve. I'm giving everybody my pain points um, because it's, it's, you have to get to that point in life where you say to yourself, to me, it was almost like I was living a sinful life because I knew I had so much more to offer and so much more to provide and so much more to reach that if I stayed mm -hmm. in my current current position, I'm like, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not growing. I'm not contributing. I'm, I'm just sitting there and I'm just being, well, I wouldn't say slothful, but I think a lot of people are out there where like, where they, they're afraid to take that next step because they don't know what the unknown is. And I, you know, as Tony Robbins says, the more uncomfortable you can get in your life, the better your life is going to be. And I got real uncomfortable. I actually ended up moving down to Florida. I, we just spoke about your brother moving to South Carolina. I left my whole family and my business. I needed that detachment for a little while. So I moved uh, a year ago, actually, this week to Florida. I left my entire family up there. Um, is it hard? It's obviously anything you do in life is going to be difficult, but there's challenges, but there's so many rewards and so many different things that, that, you know, are great. I don't have snow in January and February. I can be outside. I can be active. I can go fishing. I can do all that stuff. But on the other hand, my family's still up there. So um, there's certain things in life where you have to say, what are the pros and what are the cons? Weigh them out. And then just, I mean, it's hard to say take action, but just assess your life, see where you are, and just know that anybody out there listening can do better than what they're doing currently. I, I know that for a fact. We can all do better, but the thing we need to do is we need to focus on what we want. See, I didn't know what I wanted. I know what I didn't want. I didn't want to be at the restaurant. That's not, that's not the goal. That's not a setting something up. When I focused on what I really wanted was to spend more time with my family, to have my, you know, my, my lifestyle support my business, not the other way around. Once I figured that out from going to coaching school and working on personal development, was I able to learn, wow, this is what I need to do. And I, and I found multifamily as that vehicle because that's what real estate is. It's just a vehicle to get from one point to another really efficiently, having tenants pay your, you know, your mortgage, having tax benefits, you know, allow you to retire from your job a year earlier because you're cost segregating everything. You can talk to Jake about that, having the property management company pay you fees so you can earn revenue from there. Maybe you start the brokerage where you have those kinds of fees help you out in the beginning. But in the end, just always focus on equity, not those transactions. Those transactions can help you become financially free, help supplement your income. But at the very end, always think about growing a company and growing a brand and growing a business. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So I want to 
take it back to what you said. I think that was really valuable. You, you talked about, um, you know, you're in this restaurant business and you felt like you wouldn't be contributing. You felt like you're almost, it's almost like a sin that you're, you're just not giving what you potentially can give. And I think a lot of people kind of don't, they don't see it that way. And I, I love what you just said there. Cause I've had my parents ask me and other people ask me, when's enough enough? And it's like, well, for me, enough is enough when the world is like, there's no more problems in the world. It's okay. it, with, with what you just said there, I, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. And the problem with a lot of people, they, they think they have a scarcity mindset, right? And yeah. it always comes back to money. Money is not the cause. Money is the result. I'm not working for money. I'm working to become financially free. And, and ironically enough, the more you become financially free, the more opportunities come to you. I, life doesn't make sense to me because now I'm making more money than I ever have. I'm working, I wouldn't say less because I'm working, but I'm working at something that I love. The, the Trinity, work hard, work smart, and work with passion. That's what I really wanted to do in life. And that's what I really was striving for subconsciously, I think. And, you know, if I could have done that with the restaurant where I said, I was trying to grow these multiple streams of income. I created a company called Gino's Family uh, that was gardening with my kids in the garden, pulling the vegetables out, showing these cooking videos, how to try to get families around the table. I couldn't monetize that. Just those with my brother. I couldn't work out and I was always at the restaurant. I didn't want to work in the restaurant anymore. I didn't feel like I was growing, but I think people think it's, it's not enough is enough. I, I go throughout the day always thinking of how I can make things better. So if you have that kind of mindset, things will never, like you said, be better. So you're constantly bettering yourself and this whole notion of retirement, that's for people who hate their jobs and who, when you retire, what are you going to do when you're 62 years old? Learn how to do something. Learn how to be a coach. Learn how to like continue to go along the path. Because I know when people who have their retirement at 65, they shut down. They're dead at 68 because, they're, because their life doesn't mean anything. And they're always equating money with relevance. Money has nothing to do with it. Money you need to live. But what when you're supplying a value or service to something, you're going to get compensated for it. But it makes you feel good. And the better you feel, the more you want to produce. The more you don't mind getting call the broker the more you don't mind getting on more podcasts you're sharing it, the more energy you exude and the more people that are attracted to you that's the that's the ironic thing when you become financially free all of a sudden people are calling you to vacation rentals and to start the brokerage and let's start a syndication company you can't do that when you're in the daily grind you can't concentrate on that stuff because you're concentrating ironically on money but when you become financially free you don't con concentrate on money anymore you're concentrating on opportunities yeah. i think that's the paradigm shift that people need to have because we aren't taught that, right? We go to school to, to, to do a job. And I have my son working with me here right now. I'm trying to have my kids, even my 12-year-old, she wants to buy a Ferrari. I don't want them to work for money. I want them to work to create opportunities and to grow businesses and to, you know, the end result. Because if you start work for money, all it is is basically trading time for money. And that's what I was doing at the restaurant. When I realized, I was like, wow. 30 years ago, that worked, Todd. It doesn't work in this economy anymore. I mean, unfortunately, you need to leverage money, you need to leverage time, you need to leverage resources to become you know, wealthy and become financially free and be able to come do what you want. And I'm not telling people to run out there and to do their passion, because if you do your passion in the beginning, that got me in trouble. I love to cook. Did I like the restaurant? Look at the basic karate studio at the nail salon. People love to be a karate studio. That's their passion, but that doesn't equate to a business. There has to be a need in the market for your business. So find out what the need is, solve the need, crush it, become financially free, and then you can decide to do your passion. Yep, yep. Yeah, you don't necessarily love, well, at least for me, I don't necessarily love multifamily. I mean, it's not that mm -hmm. I love multifamily, but I enjoy the whole business and the process and all that kind of stuff behind it. So mm -hmm. not necessarily you don't have to, like you said, you don't have to open a karate studio because you like karate. Um, mm -hmm. but you can still, if you could put, still potentially have your business around karate, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do that. And you just, you got to figure out what you're going to, what is going to drive you and what's going to create that financial freedom. Like you're talking about, I think there's a, a lot of things you just said there that, uh, were really valuable. It's funny that uh, I, when you, you were talking about, um, you know, retirement, my dad, uh, just, just a couple of days ago, we had lunch and, and uh, he said, you know, what are you going to do with social security? Do you, are you going to, cause you're, you're, you know, you run your own business. How, how are you going to deal with social security when you retire? I'm like, um, I don't, I don't know, dad. Like I'm never going to retire. I don't, 
<laughs> Social Security. I, yeah, I know. Like yeah, I said, I know. It's, it's not even a thought in my mind, yeah, I guess. You, I you just brought something. Like, he kind of stopped me. My, uh, I didn't even know yes. how to respond. <laughs> yes. Well, the fun, that's the funny thing. See, so Social Security, I'm writing that off. I've been paying into it for years. When you're an employer, you match, right? People don't even know how much money we yeah. pay as employers. So right. I've written that off. The $2,000 a month, if I anything, I'll give it to my children, I'll, I'll, whatever. But we don't think of it that way because you're going to have those multiple streams coming in, whether you've sold your properties, you have a note coming in, you have other rental properties coming in. And you know what? You're going to continue to contribute. You're going to continue to do your podcast. You can do writing. You can do charitable work. You're gonna, you, whatever it is, you're going to you know, be a mentor to other people, whatever it is. Um, and that's just, I, like I said, I never thought about retiring. The only good thing that the restaurant did was it's a blue collar mentality, the blue collar work ethic. Sure. It's a hard yeah. job and, and real estate is hard. It, real estate should be hard if you want it to work. And I can sense from you, you like real estate because you're, you're a person who likes to build relationships, you like to talk to people. So there's an aspect of real estate that everybody can gravitate towards if that's who they are, if they like to yeah. network, if they like, you know, and that's what I think ultimately life's about, right? It's about creating those relationships, talking to people, connecting with people. And then obviously we're the ones who are junkies. We like to do deals. We like to, you know, bring investors along. And I think that's part of real estate. I think that's part of the allure of real estate. But if you really break it down fundamentally into why multifamily as opposed to most other the tax benefits are amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the demographics are there. Unfortunately, the market is really hot. But there's a reason why. Everyone's coming down to the Southeast. Those tax laws, guys, wake up. People in the Northeast and New York, you're going to wake up with those tax bills. Everyone's coming down here. The job growth is it's a little frothy, but people are renting. Rental, I thought rent growth would be, would be stagnant over the next three years. Knoxville, Tennessee is up 6% this year, and I don't see anything. So what does that do to asset prices? And it's still funny because rental rates are still 240 bucks less than actually paying a mortgage. So there's still room for rents to go up in, in our market. So that's what people have to be looking at. So um, I don't see it going on. That's why the multifamily is, I think, the place to be because you can scale. You can grow the business. Um, you just have to be selective right now. You just can't overpay. Right now, people are overpaying right now for assets. And I think in a few years, it's going to come back around and bite them. Right now, they got the little I.O. going for three years. And when that, when that gets up, if those rental increases don't happen, they're going to be in trouble. Yeah, I think that's a little scary that you mentioned that. The, the I.O., people are doing these I.O.s for, shoot, for, for more than three years even. I, I it just, uh, it, several people I know are doing for, yeah, exactly, for five years. And you go, boy, I mean, if, if your value of your building isn't increasing because the market mm -hmm. shifts and, and, you know, everything kind of goes down and, you know, maybe real estate does go down in value sometimes, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And so, so if it does go down in value and, and you had five years of interest only, that means you didn't pay a dollar into principal. That means that's right. It's, you know, so, so you're not creating any equity there. And if the value goes down, I mean, you know, to me, that's, that's a big, uh, that's a big risk that you're taking by doing this IO and, and, and you're forcing this deal to work because of the IO. Yeah. I think those are the, the two, there's two problems with that. The first problem is when people are getting IO, they're more or less milking the property. That's the first thing that I've seen a lot of these IO properties. They're not reinvesting the property because they, maybe they can't, maybe their cash on cash is 6% with the IO. So they don't, they're just, they're just have to draw that out and give that to investors. So they're making it barely work. And then, like you said, I remember go looking at deals back uh, two years ago in, in, in uh, North Carolina. They had 10 years of I.O. of these properties, 10 years of interest only, Wells Fargo. So 2017, they bought it in 07 for $5 million. 2017, in the height of the market, it was, it was still worth five, it was still worth what, the, what they sold the property 10 years ago. So that's what's going to happen three to five years from now. You're going to see these properties where they're already buying, let's say, I'll give you a number, 70000 a door, and that's already at the height of the market. Five years from now, if they don't go anywhere, they're not appreciate much more than that the downside risk as an investor you need to worry about your downside risk if you're buying something at 70 a door and it's only getting seven or eight hundred bucks a month in rent there's a lot of downside risk in there so if you're baking in the five years of io as part of pulling it out you're not reinvesting the property five years from now you're going to have deferred maintenance which you probably didn't put away for capex so there's there's your problem right there when that principle resets and that's the question you guys need to ask when you're underwriting deals um you know 
there's a couple of questions you need to ask the owner. The first one is, why is he selling? The second one, how long has he owned it? And I will guarantee you, there's a lot of deals out there that guys have owned them for three years, four years, five years, and ask, you know, give me the terms of the loan. And you'll see a lot of these loans are coming off interest only. And they're like, dude, well, that's the reason why. So they're lucky. People are making money in spite of themselves right now. But when that spigot turns, man, and it, and it happened back in 08, it's going to, it's going to turn like, like you don't even have a chance to, to, uh, to react to it. That's what's going to happen. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Nobody saw it. It's going to happen the same way. It's going to be all of a sudden one day you're going to be going, mm-hmm. Whoa, what, you know, what just happened? <laughs> Yeah, uh-huh. right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So on this podcast, I like to kind of focus on how do you make your, you know, real estate a business? And you guys have done a really good job at that. You've created an, an, an awesome business uh, and you guys are just continue to add these kind of branches onto your business. So I want to focus a little bit on that and, you know, advice on how do you, what are you, what are you kind of your, maybe your three golden nuggets of how do you operate a business successfully? Wow. I could give you uh, let's start with the first thing. I think you need to have partners. I think that in this kind of economy, I think you need to partner with people and, you know, list the five criteria you have with partners. I was very fortunate. I'm blessed that I met Jake. I was always had good partnerships. My brother was a great partner. I mean, he'd want to strangle me. I'd want to strangle him. But at the end of the day, I trusted him. He worked his tail off. I worked my tail off. We had common goals. Jake and I, when we first started out, I was more of a mentor to him. I taught him the business itself, but he was boots on the ground in Tennessee. We both hated our jobs. I consider my job at W2, even though I was a small business owner, he hated his we wanted to create wealth. I think you need to partner with people. And I think the partnership is, there's so many benefits to it, right? Everyone looks at the negativity, but the benefit is you have somebody who's holding you accountable. So when I look at this and I'm on this podcast right now, I know I'm doing this partly because I need to grow the Jake and Gino brand, but also that Jake is pushing me and you know I have to feed his family and he has to feed my family. So it's holding me accountable to do certain things. If I was on my own and you're on your own, you don't have that. You don't have that spark every Monday morning when we get our Monday morning calls that, hey, listen, this is what we're doing. You don't have somebody saying, let's go, let's write another book. He wants to write another book now. If it was me, I've got so much on my plate, but he's pushing me that we're going to write another book. So stuff like that, partners should bring to the table for you. They have different skill sets, different ways of looking at problems. I'll give you an example. When we first started out, <clears throat> we had employees theft, right? When you first start out, an employee steals from you. He gets mad. Jake's a big dude. He wanted to go kick the guy's butt, whatever. <laughs> I, I was I was detached from the problem, the situation. I've had that. I He got on the call with me. I calmed him down. So I was there to give him, you know, the the detached look at it. And that's what a partner can do. They can give you a different viewpoint of what's going on with the situation. And those things are all so, you know, underlooked. And I mean, we have another partner in our company who's a really, I think he's been a mentor to me as far as investing and all. Just the advice that you can get from a partner. um, They all will have skin in the games. I think that's the first thing with building a business. I think the second thing, with building a business is, you know, know what the direction is, know what you want to do. Like when we started the education company, we floundered. We didn't know why we wanted to start a podcast. Be crystal clear with yourself why you're starting a business. Now, now that I look back on it, part of the education is great for the credibility piece. You write a book, you, you, you're networking with brokers, you're networking with others. You can leverage that piece for that or getting accredited investors, trying to raise money, trying to grow a brand. That's what I think the second thing you need to focus on growing the business. And the third one, hmm, I think all the businesses should be interrelated. I don't want you doing a carpet cleaning business and a car wash business because they're not interrelated, right? So these multiple streams of income these guys teach, you know, it's, it's not that. I can give you an example of my restaurant. I've shared this with a few other people. And this could be applicable to any sort of business. But, you know, in the restaurant business, I always, I always had my hand here. This was the restaurant. This was the brick and mortar. What I told my brother, let's do these multiple streams. Let's start a catering company from there. Let's do a food truck from there. Let's do barbecues from there. Let's do weddings from there. And coincidentally, I did Jake's wedding. Let's um, start a company that I had Gino's family. We're going to start sourcing physical products from China, do cutlery, do garden bucket bags, shovels, 
Let's um, start doing education from there. Let's write a cookbook from there. All of a sudden, my brother's got marinara sauce and he wants to sell locally. So as you can see from that one little business, you have these multiple streams. You're trying to create a brand and try to create an image. And people are saying, oh, it takes too long to create a brand. We are all a brand out there. We are all the Jake and Gino's a brand. So, you know, Todd Dexheimer, you are a brand out there. So we have to be cognizant of what we want to do, but where do we want to go with it? And my brother wasn't ready for that vision. He was more of the small minded where he's got the one restaurant, he's comfortable there. And I was like, no, this could be a lot bigger because that one restaurant can't support two families anymore. But if we're doing physical products, we're doing cooking classes, you want to take people to Italy on a trip for, you know, for 10 days. I mean, it could be a lot of fun. There's a lot of aspects of that I would have truly enjoyed to take 10 people to Italy for $10,000, you know, for, you know, cooking and tours and going to Rome and doing all that. That's a lot of fun. And at the same time, you're growing the brand, you're growing the loyal tribe. You want a bunch of fanatic followers who are going to follow you and love you and you add value to their lives. They couldn't do it on their own. It's hard to book there. But meanwhile, you can take them for that excursion. That's where I wanted to go with that with that vision. And just apply that to any other business, whether you're an insurance agent who wants to do seminars, who wants to do education, who wants to you know add multiple streams where you're networking with other individuals, or you're a personal trainer, have a gym where you want to sell personal equipment, you want to sell supplements, you want to sell branding as far as shirts goes, you want to sell um, you know uh, chiropractic services or massage services. Every small business owner has it, but the problem is we, me, I was working. Uh, what did I say? I was working in the business. I was working on the business. And yeah. if you can just just spend a couple hours a week working, you know, outside of the business and trying to grow a picture, and I think that will really help people out and be like, wow, that's that is awesome. It's not real estate. It's really all the other multiple streams that that one or two or three investments that you have that you can start milking the cow and if you're out there and you are a plumber or an electrician or HVAC guy and you want to get into multifamily go out there look for investors partner with them say hey I've got a company here my company can service all of our units and I have my other company and then from there you start one little property two little properties and all of a sudden you've got a couple of properties there you've got your day job for your plumbing and then you've got that job learn the multifamily and then start scaling it out. There's no reason for that people can't do this. It's not rocket science. Like I said, if a pizza guy and a drug rep can figure this out, anybody can figure it out. <laughs> I love it. Am I right? Am yeah. I right? Am I right? Well, yeah, I mean, it, you're, you're hundred percent right. It's not that hard of a business, but it takes, as you said earlier, it takes a lot of hard work though. If you're not, if you're not willing to put in the time, I think a lot of people just don't, they think they hear that. They hear exactly what you just said. It's not that hard of a business. Well, it's not. But it does take a lot of effort, does take a lot of time, it does take a lot of dedication. If you're not willing to put that in, it's not a get rich quick, it's a get rich slow. No, uh, no. So hurry up and wait. That's what I tell, you know, that's what I tell people. I actually had a buddy that said that to me about real estate, and that's I've took taken that line. He was more insulting me about hurry up and wait. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Hurry up and wait. And so now that that's what I use. I mean, that's it's a slow mentality, it's a slow build. And you know, it happened fairly quickly for you, but it wasn't overnight. No, it's not. But that's the thing. You have to decide, um, do you want to live like the average person where they, where they hate their job, they go through the grind and for the next 20 years, they hate it. Or for the next three to five years, you put in 60 hours a week yes. or, or 50 or whatever it is. And, and maybe you include the family, or, but you need to do the, the work on the front end because a farmer doesn't go out and expect to pick corn when he doesn't plant the seed. You need to plant the seed in the beginning. And that's part of the problem. You need to know your why. You need to be focused on really why you want to do this because that corn's, you know, you're going to get a hailstorm. That corn's going to get destroyed. You know, you're going to get a frost and you're going to have to replant it again. And all of a sudden you lost the deal. We had a deal for thir for six million bucks. Now they want 16. Now, you know how gut wrenching that is? I mean, come on, man. I mean, Stuff like that's going to happen. You thought the refi was going to go through, or you thought, you know, what happened? The fire took place. Those things are all going to happen, but you can't kid yourself. You're just not ready yet. And I'm not saying you, I'm saying the listener. You're not ready yet to take that next step. When you're ready to take the next step, buckle down. It's going to be three to five years of hard work, but can you imagine after five years that you can pick up and go live wherever you want? be on podcasts, do whatever you want, enjoy the day. Say, so, you know what, today, I'm only gonna work till four o'clock today because I wanna go home and go to the beach. That's life, man. You know what, on Saturday, I take calls on Saturday. On Sunday, I have morning calls with Jake. I like to do that, that's part of this, that's part of my life. And I wanna have my family working with me. They're gonna be at my live event in October. I'm gonna have boots set in the back. They're gonna be part of my life. That's what, that's what business is all about. You can incorporate it into your life. It doesn't have to be yeah. 
separate of it. I want my kids to be part of the life. And that was the compliment I got last year. They felt like it was a family reunion at the event because that's what I think business should be all about. Your kids should be involved in business. And if they don't want to be part of it, that's fine. But at least let them get that mentality of, I was growing up, it was weird. Yeah. yeah, I thought everyone, and my, my dad owned the restaurant when I was eight years old. I'd go to work with him. I thought everyone went to, went to work at a restaurant. I thought everyone went to work with their, with their dad, right? I worked with my dad for 30 years. That's what I thought everyone did, right? Yeah. And um, it was awesome. I, I loved it. And I love when I have my kids around me. They were, that's the only thing I miss about the restaurant. I miss the customers and I miss my kids working there. So I have the ability now to have them work with me here. So yeah. um, it's part of the lifestyle. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, let's let's talk about a failure that you've had. What's uh what's one of the biggest failures you've had, and how did you learn and grow from that? Um, you know, we all have a lot of failures, a lot of setbacks. I think for me, um, I don't know. I can give you a couple. Let me give you. Well, first, my first failure I think was actually getting into the restaurant back in 1994, May 17th, when I bought it. It was a huge success, but at the same time, it was a huge failure because. Um, I mean, I met my wife through it. So, but from my perspective of trying to be an entrepreneur, I played it a little safe because I went to the family business and I didn't branch out of my own and I stayed there too long. I think that was, that was part of my, so a lot of that is on me. That's why I think subconscious, I was really mad and we really wanted to break out of my own and see if I could do it on my own. Right. Um, but you know, failures as I was going through the restaurant, I tried to get into multifamily. I tried to get into other spaces got into a mobile home park back in 05 and it wasn't the mobile home park that was the problem. I didn't do my due diligence. I didn't know about the space. I lost a lot of money doing that. You know, two years later, you know, it's just like now money's floating around. I had some extra money. I ended up buying a mixed use property in New York. Remember November, you always remember the dates, right? November of 2006, I did that closing. I ended up selling June 31st last year. So I owned this property for 11 years, right? And you know what I'm talking about, right? Because like there's certain <laughs> days, like everyone knows where they were in, when JFK got shot. Well, everyone knows where I was. I know where I was in November <laughs> 2006, right? And I bought the property. Um, I actually wrote an article about it, the 10 mistakes I made. I didn't do due diligence. I didn't you know, know what a legal, legal due diligence was. There were no COs. I bought in the wrong market. Forget about the wrong market cycle. I just bought in the wrong market itself up in New York in about two hours north of Manhattan. There's oh, just no job growth. There's, there's yeah. no rent growth. There's no, it was a mixed use building. It just, it was just horrible. I had it for 10 years, but it was a, it was a blessing in the skies for me. The opportunity that I found out was I don't want mixed use. I don't want more home parks. I want multifamily. I need a place where people, people can't live in the internet. So it's probably even worse. These strip malls are probably worse now because they're, they're all box sized. They're all, they're all, shrinking down so um i i learned a lot from that was from that experience what i learned was you have to learn you have to spend money you have to invest in yourself and educate yourself free is free you want to dive down deeper and get some really great knowledge books podcasts they're all excellent i don't i recommend them but find somebody you like gravitate towards somebody you like and if you want to get into mobile home parks I can give a couple of names. Look at the Kevin Bucks of the world. There's so many guys out there that do certain spaces, single family homes. You can go to Chris and Memphis and Best. Learn from these guys that are doing it. Don't be afraid to spend some money on yourself. And that's when it turned for me. After I bought that property, I'm like, what did I do? And, and Todd, it's not the money that you, you lose, right? You know this. You can lose money. You can always make money. It's the time. And every time the phone rang and I saw the property manager's name, I would just change. My whole persona would change. I'd become depressed. I would hate taking these calls. I don't know where I was going and it would ruin my day. So, you know, go to coaching school. You try to detach yourself from that, but still it's difficult. And the time suck and the energy suck was the most of thing for 10 years. When I sold it, I think we probably lost 400 grand in that deal. Um, best 400 grand I ever, saw, I ever lost because I haven't thought about it for one day since. Don't care what's going on that property anymore. I can focus my energy and my efforts on other stuff. So. Um, I think those are two of my biggest mistakes. You know, the, the, investing without knowing what's going on and not doing due diligence. You really have to learn the whole due diligence process because once you buy it, it's yours. Yeah, and both properties had the same story. I mean, you, you know, you just you think I would have learned, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you did you know, eventually. I, I, you did. Yes, it took me a little while longer because I became desperate. I was like, dude, I got to figure this out, man. Because, I mean, there's a lot of guys out there doing it, right? Back in 08, everyone's blaming the economy, blaming the president. No, dude, it's really on you. You, I was doing it wrong. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, and it sounds like you went and you got educated and you actually took the time to figure out how to do it right. Yep. 
which is, I, I agree. I think that's important. I think, and, and I, th I agree with you as well. There's all these free resources. Uh, and so we think, oh, we can just do it all for free, but there's also um, a lot of value in paying for some education as well. I mean, look at how much money people spend on college. Mm -hmm. you know? And then, and then they balk at spending, you know, two grand on, on, on a program. Yeah. And it's not even the money, Todd. What I found, and I heard, I listened to Jay Abraham. I love Jay Abraham. What he, what he said is I give people free advice. They do nothing. I charge them 3000 bucks an hour. They take action because once you have skin in the game, and once you're paying for something, you yeah. will value it more than if somebody off the street gave you some advice. And that's just the way I found it. And it's so true. Um, that motivation plus the ability to have a little bit of skin in the game will, will up your game and that accountability will up your game because free is free, but you don't act on free. You don't value free. If somebody gave you something for free, you're not going to value it. Look at all the heiresses in the world and people getting money for, but when they work for that man, they enjoy it more and they value it a lot more because they put some, yeah. they put some hard work into it. Absolutely. I agree. Um, so how do people get to that, that somebody wants to start, they're, they're ready to start multifamily or really any business. They're just ready to start. How do they get to that, that next level to where they can actually start taking that action and getting success coming in? Um, I would, this is what I would do personally. And it would help me. I would go out and find a life coach. I really would because you're, 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 you're transitioning. You're, and it sounds a little hook, hooky or whatever you want to say, but I went to life coaching school and work on yourself a little bit, get a questionnaire out there, start writing down what your goals are, start writing down what your vision is, start writing down why you want to do it, get clarity in yourself. And most people, they don't even have goals. They don't even work on themselves, right? It's really what's going on inside themselves. Get that clarity. Why are you starting a business? There's gotta be a reason why you're starting a business. Know that clear going in, crystal clear going into, into the business or into the investment. Because, I mean, I have a brother-in-law who spends more time shopping for cars and shopping for uh, furniture and TVs. I ask him about a TV. He knows more about a TV than where he put his money in a mutual fund. That, to me, that's <laughs> insane, right? I, I mean, that's where, that's where he values his time. But yeah. at the end of the day, figure out why you're doing this and work on yourself first and make sure you have that all worked out. Because they say 80% is mechanics. 80% uh, is psychological, I'm sorry. 20% is the mechanic part. The mechanic part is the easy part. It's the psychological part that we really have to work on. And a lot of us have those, you know, those, those inner demons or those, the, those little voices telling us we can't do it. Flesh them out, work, work on them, and then just have a clear business plan. Start working on what you want to do. And that, that's what I ended up doing. I, I knew what I wanted to do once I worked on myself. Yeah. And my wife would always make fun of me because I'm, I'm reading these, you know, I'm reading real estate books, but I'm also reading these other books that are these mindset books. And, mm -hmm. you know, she'd make fun of me of getting brainwashed. And it's like, you know what? I'm glad I didn't listen to her because right. most, usually she's right. But in this case, um, it was the right choice to make is reading all these books that uh, have influenced me so much. And, and I'm sure you're the same way. I agree. And I challenge everybody on this call. I did a, I did a podcast with Dean Graziosi a couple months ago. And one of the things that stuck out with me was do you do a 30 day news challenge, news diet, where you don't listen yeah. to any news with the try, just try that. I, 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 I can't do it. It's hard and possible for me to, but just do it for a few days and don't get any negative influence. Don't get anything out there and just figure what's going on. You'll be like, Holy cow, all the negativity out there. And then listen to a little bit of Jim Rome or a little Zig Ziglar or a little Napoleon Hill. Or even if you need a Grant Cardone who needs to, or a T. Harv Eker who's going to punch you in the stomach and give you the reality, right? If you need that, or a Gary Vee, I don't need that anymore because I'm, I'm beyond that. I, I love what I'm doing. But if you need that, if that's where you are in life, listen to that stuff because that stuff is going to motivate you. You know, think yeah. big. All those books, I've, I've read all those books. And at the time, I was like, wow, they really helped me out. And just try to fill your, fill your mind with positive thinking. It sounds, it sounds a little outlandish like your wife would think. And I think my yeah. wife looks at my bookshelf. I've got, I don't know, maybe 300 books. I don't know. And, and, and I, I'm a book guy because I want to read them. I want to touch them. Um, but, but they, they're really important to me. They're, they're very, they really, really important to my personal growth. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the news thing is, man, I, I remember during the, like the election time, the presidential oh. election time, I was getting so pissed. I was just like <laughs> everything Trump said irritated yeah. me. Everything Clinton said irritated me. Yes. Everything anybody said would just like, yes. oh, they like, our world is 
you know, everything's going down, blah, blah, blah. And I'm getting this yeah. negative, neck, just so much negative energy. Finally, I just, yes. I got to shut this stuff off. Forget yes. it. The world is not bad. It really and I, isn't. And really, honestly, since then, I've pretty much not touched the news. Like I could, you could, you could tell You're lucky. You could tell me all about this stuff that's going on. I, I, I have very little. I pay attention to the financial world. Um, it, it, you know, pay attention to the real estate world. And that's about it. I don't pay attention to all this drama because it's just like, it makes me angry and think the world is a way worse place than what it really is. Uh huh. I agree yeah. with that. And, and unfortunately, we are, I think we are living great times. If you want to open up a business. I agree. I mean, listen, we're on a Zoom call. I mean, this is amazing. You're recording this. Yeah. You can edit this yourself. I mean, you can put up a website yourself. You can do podcasts yourself. These are things 10 years ago that you would have had to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to do. Whereas nowadays, you can really start a business by yourself and then just start scaling it up. And as you scale up, you start employing people. So yeah. I totally agree with you. Yeah, cool. Um, what, what are a couple essential people that have uh, been part of uh, this, uh, business and, and your, you know, just overall success? Um, well, you have to always start with my parents. I have two great parents. Um, I guess I hit the lotto when I was born. So, um, you know, great work ethic. They just, my mom is 70, 73 and she's still working at the restaurant. So, um, I started out having a great role model. That's why I said to you, to me, it would be sinful to have that kind of start in life and not be able to be successful so that was my subconscious that was constantly driving me that was overwhelming my 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 fear and my little voice in my mouth so i always had her pushing me um i, I think the other person is my wife i mean i married up like i'm sure you did i mean like guys everyone who's successful has, has someone who's just as successful beside them and um you know she's homeschool six kids she's amazing uh, we just awesome. we just we just created another product. I mean, she's doing all the videos for me and like within a day she's at it and she says she's bored. I don't know how many people who have six kids who are homeschooling so they're bored. So that has to step, <laughs> I have to step my game up, right? Because if somebody's working at that level, I can't let her down. So I'm always thinking of ways to add value uh, to her life because she's just whatever I need, it's, it's there. Um, she's amazing. Uh, I think the other person is my partner, Jake. I mean, he's been, he's been awesome. I mean, he's pushing me. I push him. Uh, we've grown a lot in the last five years. I don't even know how that we got here. Um, you know, obviously my brother has been in business with him for 20 years. He drives me nuts. I drive him nuts, but that's what brothers do, right? We love each other and uh, it, was, it was great. So I think those are the main people right now that just that just stick out and say, wow, they've been a big, big force in my life. Cool, cool. What are some goals moving forward in the next, uh, you know, let's say five or 10 years? What, what's, where are Jake and Gino going to be? That's funny. Five years. I can't think five years. I always tell people think of five years, but five years for me, I don't know. I, you know, the next year for sure, we want to go over a thousand units worth like nine Oh nine. I think we're going to do with okay. this deal we have right now. Um, we definitely want to syndicate a deal by the end of the year. Um, we're going to write a book within the next 12 months. Have it, have a, have a, have a book on, on this, this, this multiple streams of income. That's what we're, we're driving right now. We're just writing it up right now. Um, just to continue to grow the Jake and Gino platform, the, Brokerage is going to take a couple years to launch. That's going to take a while. Um, and just to continue to have events, we have an event in October that we want to do. I try to shy away from sales sales goals and all that stuff right now. It's a little too early for that, but um, I just want to continue to grow the platform and just help people buy their first deal. That's what, that's what I'm out there trying to do. Cool, cool. That's awesome. Um, favorite book? A favorite book. Or one that you're reading right now that you really are enjoying. I'm, right now, I'm reading Persuasion. I'm trying to get through it because it's, it's a difficult. It's all about sales. It's all about talking to somebody and actually framing them like my son. He wants to drive my car. Well, how does he pre-frame me? You know, he brings me lunch. He, he wants to drive my car. He's washing my car. He's, you know, bringing me breakfast in the morning. He's doing stuff. So that persuasion is, is amazing. They put people into, uh, in, in, into, the, in, into the moment. Um, the other book I'm reading, uh, I like Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. I think that's where all the gurus nowadays have taken you know they, they took it from him and it's funny you read back then all those living beliefs back then all the things that they were talking about we talk about the one percent nowadays dude go back 80 years ago 90 years ago you had rockefeller flagler you had schwab all these guys you had carnegie you had the you know the, the uh, railroad barons that vanderbilt they were the like 
half percent. It's not, not even, there's no comparison now. Now you have the transparency. Everyone can rise, whereas years ago, that wasn't the case. Wasn't so the case. Let's, bring it, let's bring it back into perspective. And, and the stuff that he teaches about, those are the same laws 100 years ago to become wealthy as they are nowadays. So I think that's a really powerful book. Cool, cool. I love that book. I read it probably, uh, I, I wouldn't say once a year, but every couple of years I, I read that book, dig into it. Listen, either That's listen cool. or read it. So I, lo I love yeah. that book. Um, I guess the last question before we wrap up, what is, what is your definition to uh, a seeker of financial freedom? Oh, uh, my definition of financial freedom? Yeah. Well, I think the first thing, I think everybody under 30, I wrote an article years ago, focus on financial freedom. And my definition of financial freedom, I always tell people, is work with where I want, when I want, how hard I want, and I think most importantly, with who I want. Um, it's important. Um, you know, once you become financially free, those are the options you have. And I only want to work with people that I like. I mean, at the restaurant, I didn't like a lot of people and it's because probably because of me, but I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. That's not how I learn. I, I don't have an ego. I want guys to be smarter than me. That's how I learn whether I'm, a, I'm interviewing these podcasts. I mean, Cameron Harold, I mean, Brian Scudamore, uh, you know, you, the list goes on. Dean Grazio, CT, record. these guys are all brilliant my, as far as I'm concerned. So I couldn't do that at the restaurant, but now that I'm financially free, I can sit on a podcast with them and talk to them and learn from them. So that's what financial freedom to me has allowed me to do. So that allows me for my personal growth. It allows me, I guess, to make money on those podcasts if whatever, but it, that that's what financial freedom to me is. I just think everybody should focus on that. Because once they start doing that, then it's like, wow, game on. I don't have to worry about paying the bills. And then just the pie starts getting bigger and you start getting these other ideas and these other, these other opportunities coming your way. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to wrap up. I could probably keep on talking to you for the next like hour or two, but um, you've got you can a lot tell. of I'm a talker. That's right. <laughs> well, you got a lot of the same mindset too as me, which is great. I mean, a lot of mm -hmm. what you're talking about, and, and we didn't even really dig into the multifamily and, and a lot of the advantages and strategies and stuff like that. But uh, mm -hmm. so we could probably keep talking forever, but in, uh, we're going to wrap up. <laughs> so how do people get in touch with, with you? How do they learn more about what you've got going on? Well, that's funny you say that. So we haven't really dived into it. So if anybody's listening to the podcast, if they want a PDF copy of the Wheel of Our Profits book, Todd, let them reach out. It can yeah. be Gino at jakeandgino.com. I'll send you a free PDF copy of it. It's the first start. It's just, it's a basic of our strategy, buy right, manage right, finance right. Those are the three legs you need to become an efficient and profitable, uh, you know, operator of multifamily. The buy right, you need to nail once you buy it, it's done, but you need to buy it right. Um, the finance right, once you nail the finance right, it's done. The manage right is the, is the third leg. It's the wheel. If one of those aren't, it'll tumble over. So we didn't dive into that. And as you can see, it's not really about multifamily. It's really about getting your mindset and why you're doing it. Um, JakeAndGino.com is our website. Uh, we have a podcast called Wheelbarrow Profits. I can leave those in the show notes. But like I said, if anybody's really interested in multifamily, it's really, I, I really, I wrote the book really simplistic, to be honest with you. Jake and I wrote it because we're writing it and we're learning about cap rates and learning about, you know, cost seg and learning about how to manage a property. And it was our experience. So it's the, it's the first step. Like you said, book is a great introduction to it, into diving into why you get multifamily. And I think once you, you, once you can say to yourself, I'm flipping these houses or I've got six single family homes, it's not working. Once you read the book, it'll be like the light bulb will go on. And once that light bulb, light bulb goes on, man, the opportunities you're like, wow, I got to go take it to the next level. So how do, how do people get, you guys got a conference coming up. I think you said it was in um, October. Where, where is it at? Yes. October 6th and 7th. I know you're going to be there. It's in Nashville. So we did one last year in, in Knoxville. We had about 200 people. And I told Jake, let's do it somewhere where we can get people to fly in real easy venue. Um, it's at the Renaissance in downtown. It's beautiful. It's a great place. We're looking for at least 300 people. No upselling there. I mean, it's we're teaching the buy right, manage right, finance. We've got some great speakers. We have Kim Taylor, the attorney. We have Jay Scott presenting there. Uh, my boy Reed Goosens will be emceeing the whole event. We're going to be doing some presentations. And it's really basically about the buy right. And we're going to have a management team there teaching how to manage these assets. And then the finance right portion. We have uh, Paul Peoples from Old Capital doing the finance portion part of that. So that's awesome because, you know, multifamily is a little different with financing. But 
it's not something that you can't overcome. I mean, but you got to get there. And I think, you know, the best thing about these conferences it's the tickets and expensive is 250 bucks. We're making it inexpensive for our community. But the best thing about it is you're going to meet our vendors. You're going to be able to meet other multifamily guys. You need money for a deal. You're going to be able to network and, and get money from people there. You need to look for a partner. We've had people on our platform partnering, finding partners there. And it's just like you said, it's a relationship, relationship based place. And we like Nashville because there's so much to do. I mean, the music down there is great. The restaurants down there are great. So, Take a weekend down and come down and join us. We'd love to have you there. Yeah, I think the the most valuable part, I was at a, a conference last year and I met so many fantastic people I've kept in relation mm -hmm. in, in contact with them. I and we've got a mastermind group that we formed. Yes. Out of love just that. out of that. I mean, it's just yes. it's such great connections that you make. As long as you go out there and make those connections. You can't just sit in the corner and expect everybody to come to you. You have to be open-minded, right? I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. You're going to get guys that are pitching you there. You're going to get upsells, sure. but it's what people say is about them. What you hear is about you. I don't mind when somebody upsells me because it's okay. They're trying to make a living. I can say, Hey, listen, I don't need the opportunity right now, but sometimes you might need a little that opportunity. So go there with an open mind. There's always going to be there people who are going to add value to you. And it's really more of a motivational piece too. Cause I'm, I want to give everyone a life coaching questionnaire before they get there. I might do a little life coaching presentation about the why, about why you're here, about why multifamily. That's important. That's a great connection for you to have. And like you said, the mastermind, we didn't touch on masterminds. I love masterminds. I think they're, I think they're awesome. We started one with our community, 10 guys. I just stopped it. They're going to take over and do it themselves. But you've met 10 people who have, are like-minded, who are looking for resources, who can share resources, who can like, hey, what are your successes this month? What are your failures? What do you need to hold me accountable for the month? It's just, it's such an awesome space to be in. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. So yeah, check check that out too. Uh, 250 bucks, that's cheap. That's nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I try, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to get really the community there. Right. I just want to get people there and just talk about real estate. There's no I, reason I, not to I go for it. that price. Mm -hmm. so, cool, man. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, tons of, tons of great information and, uh, uh you know, maybe in a, a year or so I'll have you back on. Cause I think we can talk a lot more. So <laughs> <laughs> you let me know. I love to come back on. Listen, I want to thank you for having me on and, uh, you know, allowing me to share the story and guys, it's, it's all about what you want and anybody yeah. can do it. Trust me. And don't listen to naysayers. Find people who, you know, who are going to support you and, and are going to listen to you. Awesome. Hey, special thanks to Gino Barbaro for joining us on the show. And uh, a couple things I took from this episode uh, that Gino brought to us, a couple of value bombs. Uh, first of all, focus on what you want. Know your direction. Know where you're going. Um, and, and know your why, too. He talked about knowing that. Know, know your direction. Know your why. Know, know what you're doing. And, uh, and then build that roadmap. Next is partner with people. He talked about the value of partnership. And whether that be um, an actual you know, partner on your, in your business or just partnering on deals or making sure you're finding, I think, the right people to uh, have on your team um, and, and actually have some ownership too um, is what Gino was talking about. So find people to partner with. Find people who are going to add value to your business and uh, are, are going to hold you accountable. You know, he talked about his partner holding him accountable, him holding his partner accountable. Um, so have those, have the right people. Um, and then the next thing he talked about is, is growing the big picture, growing the interrelated businesses. Uh, if you can have businesses that complement each other uh, and just continuing to grow those, that can be a lot of value. So uh, they've got their multifamily uh, acquisitions, but they also have their property management. They're starting a brokerage. They've got their education platform, their coaching platform, uh, their podcast, their book. Um, so they've got, you know, they've got a bunch of stuff that, that uh, Jake and Gino uh, have going on. So uh, again, appreciate uh, Gino taking time out of his day and sharing with us a ton of value. Uh, go uh, onto their website, jakeandgino.com. Uh, you can email Gino. He can give us our, his email address. So it's gino at jakeandgino.com. And then don't forget to check out their uh, their conference that they got coming up. They got, I think he said one in October and then another one uh, likely coming up after that. So uh, go check that out as well. 
Uh, and then for us, you know, go onto our Facebook page, go on to uh, YouTube or, or um, you know, even SoundCloud and, and leave us comments. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know uh, what you what you want us to talk about. Uh, give us some ideas uh, that you want us to cover and we'll either find a guest that can cover it or, or we'll talk about it ourselves. And then uh, don't forget to share us out. Share us out on social media. Let all the people know uh, that you think may be interested in this. Uh, you never know. Uh, people that maybe you didn't know would be interested in a podcast like this might be. So share it out. Let other people know what we're doing. And, uh, and then, you know, iTunes, you can give us a rating review. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, again, same thing on Facebook or, or, or YouTube or any other channels that you can get a hold of us on. Just kind of let us know what we're, how we're doing. Maybe we can improve on some things. So we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you think and, and uh, what we can do. My name is Todd Dexterber. I am signing off. Make every day Saturday. Are you ready to start investing in real estate today, but don't know where to start? Sometimes investing can seem way too complicated, but it actually couldn't be any easier than with homeinvest.com. You know the co-founder and my friend, Nate Armstrong. He appeared on episode 20, and if you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it, episode number 20. Home Invest is a company that allows you to invest in turnkey real estate. Their goal is to build powerful investment tools that make real estate investing accessible to everyone. They have contractors and property managers available for you with the click of your mouse. While other real estate agents can only offer a property, Home Invest brings you a full turnkey package that allows you to diversify your investments, earn passive income and start building equity in properties. Their simple intuitive design allows newcomers and experienced investors alike to hit the ground running and to be able to choose the properties when they want and where they want. View easy to understand charts and data to allow you to buy in only a few clicks or just a simple phone call. With Home Invest, you'll be building your portfolio as quickly or as slowly as you would like. And right now, Home Invest is giving our listeners, Pillar of Wealth Creation listeners, a free course on how to finally win in real estate investing. So go to homeinvest.com forward slash pillars. That's homeinvest.com forward slash pillars to claim your free course today.